Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a really simple snowy pine forest. Another great idea for Christmas card painting if you're getting organised. So grab your paints and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome along. Today we're going to do a lovely sort of loose watercolour little foresty scene. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a little sort of mountain top mound. I've got some big brushes with me here today um, and that's because we're going to be working with quite a wet uh, a wet approach. So I've also taped down my paper but I'm not actually going to go right out to the edges and do a crisp edge. I just want to keep it in place. So I've got my mop brush here which I'm just wetting the page above this pencil line. But if I want a really nice precise uh, finish I use my flathead one wash brush which means I can just get a more precise line like that. So all these types of brushes I do sell in my web shop if you want to get your hands on some uh, and I'm going to begin just sort of letting that so very slowly seep into the page. I'm going to begin with a sort of misty, shadowy colour. Well, I've got Payne's Grey and just had a tiny bit of sort of burnt sienna. A little bit I had a sort of greeny French ultramarine blue combo there. And what I want to do is just sort of swirl, just sort of swish a bit of colour in the sky. Maybe a bit more a bit of an atmospheric cloudy day but what I really want to make sure of is that I come down and sort of paint oh the phone is ringing that's never happened in the entirety of filming YouTube for two years never thought to actually uh, take the phone out of here anyway Ant has run to get that from downstairs so that's lucky and we've got a lovely swirly sky now, as that just starts to settle into the page just a little bit more, I can start to mix up the colours for my trees. Now, the colours are going to be, we're doing pine trees, which we all think of as a nice sort of dark forest green, but the trees off in the distance, they're gonna be more of a muted colour because we see them sort of through the haze of this gray sky. So what I need to do is to knock back the vibrance of the uh, knock back the vibrance of the green. So I'm just adding Payne's Gray Burnt Sienna in here and slowly we're getting a sort of series of a slightly more muted green and slowly this is just starting to dry. So I've got my size two brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna begin by taking a little bit of that line and scribbling, scribbling a tree. Now it's quite warm, quite brown, so I think I want to add a bit more Payne's Gray to that. So I can just do that if I want. Don't need to worry about mixing it in in the palette. And what I'm really pleased about here is it is definitely feathering, very much so, but it's holding its shape and it's looking quite recognisable as a tree, the kind of tree I want to paint. So I'm going to paint another one in. So starting with that vertical line, just trying to be quite nimble with the brush, you really don't need to do much. And it's just wonderful how it, it just creates a tree right in front of your eyes, doesn't it? It's kind of magical. I'll just add a little bit more Payne's Grey. But the whole point of these is they're in the distance and they are going to be the paler colours. They're ones that we can uh, more easily paint over the top of uh, once that's dried and we can put in trees on a dry page in the foreground. Mm -hmm. 
And one more just sort of right off in the distance behind the hill. And you see how in not painting or wetting that white, uh, the, the page underneath the trees, it means we get a really nice crisp line. So we're going to let these dry 100% and then we can paint in our scene in the foreground. This is lovely and dry now and I'm now going to, I've just put a little bit more uh, Payne's Grey in there just to get it really nice and intense and dark and I'm now going to paint in uh, a few trees that are far more crisp and uh, visible so I'm going to begin by painting in one that's just sort of slightly hidden uh, there and uh, even with a size 2 brush you can still get a lovely fine line and what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to be sort of fairly brave and be a little bit sort of haphazard with the brush to create these pine trees. So I've got my brush angled fairly low to the page and I'm just bringing the branches out in a in a scribble motion and and making the most of unpainted space and just following down the central line and now I've got to be very careful just to make sure that I don't go in front of my little hill. So I'm going to go right down into the bottom. And that's rather nice. And then what I am going to just do is clean my brush off. I'm just going to sort of soften it into the hill just a little bit. Okay, so we've got that one just sort of hiding behind there. And now I'm going to paint a larger one that is, we can see the whole of it. Here. And I think with these trees, it's just a, a case of going in with a bit of confidence and, you know, practice on a bit of scrap paper before, just so you get used to this slightly messy approach. The one thing I do with these trees, I sort of slightly angle the scribbles down a little bit. Now the one thing I'm going to do with this tree, I didn't do that tree, is I'm going to be adding extra low lights once I've got to the bottom because we want to just give the sense that this tree is just a little bit more in the foreground. So the other thing I can do is just add a few more little details. When I say details, I mean it's it's still pretty scribbly and nondescript. But this tree is just looking the tiniest bit more refined and defined than the other one. Um, another tip I think is if you haven't painted these before is don't sort of go outwards too quickly because then you'll find your tree is ginormous. If you can just keep it fairly contained in the space you will be you will be grateful because your tree won't look like a massive wigwam or a tent. Now when we get down to the bottom, because this is a snowy hill, my thought is, is that the tree is probably fairly submerged in the snow. So we've got our way down to the bottom. I'm just going to clean my brush off and a little bit like that one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that bottom bit of colour and turn it into 
a nice bit of sort of hillside shadow and I've just got a bit of the more sort of original dilute colour we had in the sky and I'm just going to add in a few extra little sh shadows there maybe just a little bit more Payne's grey Snow is obviously white, but it's all about what it reflects and the, the shadows and the colours that we see in it. So it's a, a real opportunity to be able to uh, create those little bits of, of detail by putting bits of light and shade in it. Now I've got a bit of Payne's Grey and I'm actually going to get a smaller brush here. I'll get a size two tenths. I recently decided I wanted to just uh, refresh my set of brushes. They're very hard working, my pro art brushes, but they were starting to struggle to make a fine point. So that is the sign that you want to uh, invest in a in a new set. They don't last forever, paint brushes, um, and they are available in my web shop on Etsy. We ship around the world. And uh, it's been wonderful to see how many of you have really loved using them ever since we started selling them about a year ago. Okay, so I'm just adding in some extra low lights. Still a little bit damp at the bottom of the tree, but that's fine. There we go, and there we have a simple snowy winter landscape, perfect for some quick Christmas cards. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons because without their support we would not be able to create videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed them then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course if you never want to miss another video hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time.